Jehovah's Witnesses refuse blood transfusions mainly based on a scripture in the book of Acts that says abstain from blood, literally. And so they take that to mean even transfusions into the body. Um, but beyond that, Jehovah's Witnesses also see blood as sacred. It's what life is from. Jesus shed his blood for mankind's sin, for mankind's salvation. So they see that as just something not to tinker with, that it was a commandment from God, and so they're going to honor that. Following the witness way of life isn't easy. At 23, Seth's own faith is being tested. My health condition that I'm facing right now, it's um, called sclerosing cholangitis. Definitely went from something I thought was minor to now something very serious. Do you have any more program, Mom? A rare genetic disease has been attacking Seth's liver since he was a teenager. Jehovah's Witnesses accept most medical treatment. Seth takes 30 pills a day and gets nightly injections to keep his liver functioning. However, he'll need a liver transplant. Seth wants the transplant. But as a Jehovah's Witness, he won't take a blood transfusion, even his own stored in advance. And without blood, hospitals won't take him. When Jehovah's Witnesses refuse blood transfusions, it causes extreme tension between the medical establishment and the religion. And when blood transfusions became common in the 1950s, you know, doctors would force the blood on witnesses against their will. And witnesses said, look, we, we're not against medicine. Treat us, just find a different way other than blood. Well, for 30 or so years, there was no other way. And so it was always this conflict. It's fearful for us when somebody's sick. All Jehovah's Witnesses carried that little card with us in, in our wallet. If I drive home tonight after playing hockey and get into a car accident, this is something that will hopefully protect me if I'm unconscious and not able to, to make the stand that I've already prepared myself to make. They believe that God has the right to set the standards of what's right and wrong, and that those standards, when adhered to, are always going to be bringing blessings to those who are obedient to them. So they don't feel like they're being pressured into not taking a blood transfusion. This is not mere compliance to some organizational dictum. Uh, it's their personally deeply held religious beliefs that that's what God expects of those who serve him. When HIV and AIDS came along in the 1980s, suddenly the medical establishment had a reason to take another look at blood. And here were these witnesses all along saying, hey, we don't want blood, you know, try something new. So in a bizarre kind of uh, confluence, they decided to work together after being antagonists for so long. USC will perform Seth's surgery to meet the religious needs of Jehovah's Witnesses. In turn, the hospital gets to test out new technology on them. The aim is to limit blood loss to the point where most transfusions are unnecessary. USC thinks bloodless surgery should be the new standard for everyone. That led to this weird alliance between very strange bedfellows. Jehovah's Witnesses, who never liked blood, didn't want to use blood, and a scientific community trying to figure out how are we going to do surgery if we can't use the blood supply because it might be infected. You certainly start thinking about, well, is this the right thing to do? And obviously, as parents, you know, with Seth being 23 years old, uh, we didn't make this decision by ourselves. He could die. And then when I found out that my dad wanted to do the uh, live donor, it was even kind of worse. You want to have your brother alive, but you also risk losing your dad. This is a scary time, but m hopefully, more than likely, it's all going to turn out OK. And, and even if we do lose one of them or both of them, you remember that there is a hope for the resurrection. If he does not wake up, we'll still be able to see him in a paradise the way we were meant to live. Everything was accomplished, and I was really surprised. I woke up, you know, and I was like, oh, I feel a lot better. And it's like a really big change. What well, happened with the results? So it, it's really interesting to me to see how a religious belief, when accommodated, can actually benefit the rest of society. Because now, in many hospitals, uh, you and I will receive bloodless surgery and not even know it. Of course, if we needed blood, we would get it, but doctors seem to be pushing uh, to this new frontier.